I'm gutted. Hi, this is Dan Yost, and you're watching Mixed Down Mondays. So I got really inspired the other day because a lot of uh, studios that I follow like to kind of post some of their beginnings or, you know, do a studio tour or things of that nature. And, and I was like, you know what? I actually still have the device that I started recording on. Um, I know some of you out there know what this is, and maybe many of you have no idea what, what this is or what I'm talking about. Um, but 21 years ago, I bought my first recording equipment. It was the Boss BR-1180. And I had been drooling over these things for a few years, ever since I started getting the uh, musician's friend, or I think it was Mars Music at the time, because Mars, rest in peace. Uh, was a precursor to like musician's friend guitar center sam ash and all the uh, all that stuff prior to the basically before the internet became what the internet was um it, you would get catalogs and i would flip through the catalogs and be like oh my god I, I i would love to get one of these devices to record on and about 2002 they came out with a model that had a built-in cd burner and now this was a game changer. I mean, like, you could record your music and then record it right to a CD and you got music to share with people. You could play it in your car, play it in your Walkman, play it in, you know, it, it was, it was awesome. And the unit was about $1,000, which in today's conversion would be And I saved up some money and I had a little bit of spending cash. I was a freshman in college and I was like, you know what? I wanna start recording my own music and making my own CDs. So I went to a place called Bringy Music in St. Pete, Florida. And uh, if some of you follow me on Instagram, you may have noticed that name because that was a staple in my middle school to high school uh, days of when I would visit my grandparents in Florida, I'd go to Bringy Music and I would just play their instruments. I'd buy stuff from them. I'd sell stuff to them. And, and I had an account with them. And, and it turns out like last year, the owners retired. Uh, congratulations to them. They didn't close because of COVID or anything like that. But, you know, they've been in the business for 64 years. So uh, congrats to them for their retirement. Thank you for bringing all the music. Thank you for bringing all the gear. And thank you for being a part of my fledgling uh, recording days. So I went to Bring You Music and I took about $1,000 and they had one BR-1180 in stock. Uh, and I bought it. I bought it and took it home and just immediately started messing with it. And this thing was cool. Talk about like you can mess with the faders. You can... Uh, punch in you could uh have a a drum track and boss like was the cornerstone of the market at the time boss had pedals they had loop stations they had uh drum machines they had like everything they had like boss was like the name everyone had the the metal zone or the os1 or the ds1 and and all these awesome pedals and uh so i wanted to get involved with recording and they offered a digital 10 track recording studio and it was portable something i could take with me around the campus or i could take it with me um, around the city and i used this thing from 2002 to 2009 and i made countless recordings with it um i did two full albums of my own stuff i did uh maybe three i you know, I did my friends' recordings. I recorded live stuff because I could just come in off the board uh, from whatever venue I was at. And I got excited the other day because I saw that there was an option 
to potentially move those files off of the hard drive that was built into this unit and get them converted to WAV files so that I can then mess with them in the studio. And I was like, yes, I've been wanting to revisit some of these recordings and go and go through them and like clean them up and maybe re-release them or just have them, you know, have a digital conversion of them from digital. And I got really excited and I, I, I still have it. So I pulled it out the other day and I, uh, put in a blank CD and I went through the process that I found online where it's like, go to this section, hit this, hit this and change this thing to wave and, and click okay and set the right speed and go. So I did that. And then I waited. And I waited more. And I waited even longer. Some time later. It had been over 24 hours of this thing still writing. And it, I, I, I thought it was stuck. I thought it was stuck in the process. I don't know. Um, You know, when you're dealing with a piece of equipment that's 21 years old, I guess I, I, I lost patience, uh, but I decided to turn it off. I didn't unplug it. I just shut it down. And it even gave me a prompt. Do you want to shut down? Yes, I want to shut it down. Shut it down. And I don't even know if that was where the mistake was made. I don't know if it was because it sat for 24 hours just humming away, trying to burn. I don't know what files. I just, I thought I selected all of them. I don't even know if I selected all of them from one song. I don't know if I selected all of them from the entire hard drive, but it just, it took 24 hours humming along, no progress. And as soon as I opened it back up, it was fried. Seven years of songs in albums, in finished projects, started projects, unfinished projects, friends recordings, gone. They're fucking gone. I'm so mad. I'm, I'm just, I'm so upset about it. It's, uh, there's, there's nothing I can do. It's gone, never coming back. And I thought for a glimmer of a moment, I had, I had something because here's the CDR with data on it that got stuck in the process of creating a data CD. But when I put this into the computer, it says it can't read it. I put it back into the machine. It doesn't recognize it. When I go to a certain section in the machine, it says uh, I can I can see that it has something on. There's like WAV files won't load. Can't initialize. Can't can't do a thing. Can't backup. Can't. It's it's completely wiped. And then it wouldn't even you know start a new song. It had something on it, and I hit play, and it was just full distortion, just, just full, full on distortion, not even nothing audible whatsoever. So with nothing else left to do, I just initialized the whole system, erased whatever data was corrupted. And now it's fresh and new, like it's ready to be used for the first time. And I'm, I'm just wrecked. I'm so I'm so destroyed over this. Um, there's the only good news is that I I do actually have some of the finished recordings on a CD. So unfortunately, in some cases, I don't have them with me. They don't. I think maybe they're in my parents' storage. Um, I do have a couple of the copies of CDs, a few things from back when I was in the band called Die Later Mouse. But I really wanted to remaster that that first album that we did. And the real gut punch, too, is that when I pulled it out the other night, 
and opened, uh, like turned it on, started uh, going through the files. I, I came across the, the very first song in the entire hard drive is a song called Ballard Rag. And it was written by myself and my buddy, my bandmate, my best friend, Ben Newton. And I, I sat and just listened to it with headphones on. I just, I just sat and listened to the song and I started messing with the faders like I did when I, when I bounced it down and it still sounded great. It really did. It sounded pretty damn good. Um, so I got to hear it one last time before it's all gone. I still have a CD copy of it somewhere. It still exists, but the masters all gone. <sighs> Do you want to see it? Do you want to see the device that I started on and it completely erased all the history, all the just like just records was formed when I was in college. Uh, me and my buddy, Patrick Schwing, we were, we were in a, a college band called Hannah's gift. And like, we formed just records out of the fact that I really loved Radiohead and that, you know, we wanted to start a label and, and it wasn't really a label. We just, we just released CDs underneath that name and it was fun, but here it is. The BR 1180. Digital recording studio. BR 1180 boss. Hard disk. Look at that. Look, there's the disk drive. And you could have, it's called a 10 track, but really it's, it's eight tracks that you can have simultaneously going. And then you can bounce that down to a master track. And I believe that you can manipulate it a little bit more than that. I, I haven't looked at this thing in a very long time. I last used it, I think in 2008, maybe 2009. But 2009 is where I switched to Pro Tools and I never looked back. But yeah, this uh, this old beast served me well all through college and some post-college. And it had two inputs. You can do a line input or a microphone input. And to record drums, what we would do is we would actually use an external mixer, plug everything into the mixer and then run its main outs into here and track drums that way. And then we would just multi-track guitar next, bass next, uh, vocals, backing vocals. Oh man. And have little, you can have the little buttons for like your zero counter. Record, uh, this is just like an old tape deck. You hit record, play. You know, it, you can do some other stuff with this too. It had, um, it had all the boss effects in it. Like all the boss effects. And that was cool. Um, had some drums built into it so you could play to a drum track. You can even edit the drum tracks, but God, that was, that was like a nightmare. Trying to do any editing on a screen this big was a nightmare and I just didn't do it. So what, what this required me to do was to play the song correctly from start to finish. And when I go on to the next track, I would put on the headphones, turn up the track I just did, and record the next track. And if I didn't play it right the first time or second time or third, I got to start all over, start from the beginning. This made me a better musician because you had to play it right all the way through. Yeah, there's ways to punch in and punch out, but it was it was just such a nightmare to try to do that. It was just easier to start from the, the, the top. Maybe later this year, I'll do one last song on this thing before I just hang it up indefinitely because I, I, I could barely look at this thing now. I'm so upset. It's all gone. It's it's all gone. <sighs> Didn't mean to be a downer today. I just I just really wish that it worked out. I'm gonna hold on to this for whatever reason. Who knows if I'll ever be able to extract whatever's on there. Computer won't recognize it. I don't know what to do. If any of you out there have any idea, feel free to chime in. Um, but everything that I found online, 
gone. It's just gone. This technology is, like I said, 21 years old. It came out 2002. A little lesson for today. I back up everything on the cloud. I have hard drives and backups of those hard drives. And that is how I operate now. Because if this happened with any of the other stuff that I've worked on since 2009, uh, I don't know if I could move on. I don't think I could go, go past that. I don't think I could ever work again. So I've actually got stuff stored in the cloud. I've got stuff stored on, uh, on hard drives. That's the best advice I can give you. Back your stuff up. Anyways, thanks for listening. This is Dan Yost at Just Records for Mixed Down Mondays.